Welcome to the channel everyone. This video is going to be a redo from one of my older videos. I think it was like my third video that came out in about a year, maybe a year and a half ago. I had a comment, guy just said deja vu and I didn't know what he meant. And then a couple months back I had another comment on that same video, a guy says Groundhog Day. So I pulled that video up to see what these two comments were about and I'll tell you what, I was embarrassed. I don't know how this happened. But, and I don't even know what I shot that video on. It might have been on my phone and I think I just shot it and then uploaded it right from there. And I started the video and then I stopped and I think I was gonna walk over and turn the phone off and restart it and I didn't. I just started doing the video again right from the beginning. So I had two of the same things right in that same video. And uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. It was, it was embarrassing to watch that thing. And I think there's been a little over 9,000 views on that video. I don't know how you people watch that video. I couldn't watch it. It was bad. So I'm going to redo that video and hopefully I can do a little bit better this time. You know, Lloyd, just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this. And totally redeem yourself. <laughs> but yeah, that one was pretty rough. I got to hand it to you. Whoever watched that video, you suffered through it. So anyway, let's get started with the redo. I think the title of that video is Hammers and Dollies for Beginners. What I mentioned at the very beginning that I didn't talk about a shrinking hammer because it really shouldn't be used anymore for heat shrinking. So I'm also going to show you some of the problems associated with this shrinking hammer. Yeah, here's a close up of this hammer. It kind of looks like a little waffle iron. And I don't really think that shrinking hammer is the correct term for this. You're not going to hit piece of sheet metal with this and it's going to shrink it. Let me tell you what I think it should be called. Okay, actually I think this should be called an anti-stretching hammer. When you're doing heat shrinking, and I've got a video out there you can watch on heat shrinking, and I don't even use this hammer for that. When you're hammering and dollying, and I've talked about this before in other videos, you're compressing the metal and it's going to make it thinner and it's going to have to spread out so you can actually stretch the metal. I think what all these little teeth do they kind of bite into the steel to keep it from spreading out. So when you're hammering on something, it's not going to force it away from you. It's going to just kind of contain it. Let me show you some of the problems with this. All right, I got a scrap piece of fender here and there's bare metal with rust on it. We got some leftover paint here. I'm going to use this hammer and dolly on this fender and I'm going to show you what you can run into. I'm going to run a Rolock wheel over this thing, clean the surface off, and you should be able to see how those pits are all contaminated now. Okay, I don't know if that shows up on camera, but all those little pits in there, now the rust that was on the surface is driven down in the bottoms. The only way you're going to get that out is to sandblast it, so that's why I don't use a shrinking hammer. And the other end of the shrinking hammer is this chisel tip. And I think that's why I bought this hammer because that's handy for getting in all kinds of stuff if you got to put a crease back in or trying to get inside a corner. So that works real good. As far as the shrinking head on here, I don't use it for that. The rest of that older video, what I talked about, was taking your work nice and slow so you don't overstretch something. And I've got a fender here and this has got a crease running through here. It's got a little bit of an eyebrow there. And I hope you can see it's pushed in. It's not bad. Let me do a diagram and I'm going to talk about this before I get started on it. If you're looking down the side of a vehicle, all vehicles are usually, they're all crowned out. Say if this is the belt molding area and this was the bottom of the door, your handle's right in here. It's always got a crown to it. Fender, door, quarter panel. And I think the idea behind that Whenever you have an arch like that, an arch is a strong structure. That's why you see bridges like an arc, or they're just hard to compress. So that gives the body a little bit more strength. And if you've got a dent in here that you want to fix, and you kind of get in a hurry and you start banging on that without taking your time or without checking your work in process, you got the possibility of overstretching it. And now, it's out too far, that's going to be hard to get that back in where you need it. And what's going to happen 
if you start trying to you overstretch it, you push it out too far, you need to go back, you're going to end up with some buckles down here and buckles up there. You're just creating more problems. So the idea is to work this out nice and slow, take your time and check your progress as you go. But let's get started on that fender. Okay, just for demonstration purposes, I've got this fender upside down. I've got the camera right in there. You know, if you're working on this on a car, it's, you're not going to be able to see it as well. Maybe inside of a door you can. I just take the fenders off of cars a lot of times. You can straighten them a whole lot easier, get them primed, hang them back on and paint them. What we got here, there's that small crease and then it ends up with this little dent. So I'm going to start, I'm using a light picking hammer here. And I'm just going to go around the outside edges and work my way in. There we go. I can see it. I hope you can. Okay, now I'm going to start working more towards the center. Okay, now I'm going to work on this crease here. And this I'm using my heavy dolly. Normally if this fender was on the car I'd use a light dolly, the thinner one. But being this is kind of bouncing around I want a little bit more support. Okay, with the straight edge, very little damage left. This edge right here, a little bit stiff. Uh, I'll have to work on that, but it's coming along pretty good. And you can still do a little bit more hammering and dolly on it with the pick hammer. Bring this stuff up nice and slow. That's the main thing, what I wanted to show. Just take your time, and this is not overstretched right now. And a little bit more work on there. There'd be hardly any filler at all in it. Okay, let me just show you what happens if you get overly aggressive with your hammer and dolly. Like I showed, this was actually fairly close, a little bit more work. I'm going to get kind of carried away with it and show how easy you can stretch it out. And I'm going to switch to the lighter dolly. Okay, how's that looking? You can see how that is out too far now. And that was just probably less time hammering on it like that than when I took my time. And you can see the amount of damage. Now it's going to be hard to get that down flat. You're going to hammer it down. It's either going to go too far. It's going to start oil canning on you. It's going to throw this edge off. This is a little bit hard telling because it's got a curve anyway. That's why I say take it nice and easy. Take your time and check your work. And I don't know if it shows up on camera, but from doing it that way, now I can see where it looks like it's got low spots here. It's really not. It's because it's high right here. The first thing guys start doing is just putting way more Bondo than they need. Now to get that tapered out, your Bondo is going to come way out on both sides to kind of bridge that over. Okay, that's why this video is hammer and dolly for beginners. It's just to teach people, take your time, check your work as you go. So I hope this video was better than that other one. You know what I really can't believe about that old video, that I didn't get tons and tons of bad comments. You know, that actually surprised me. I think that probably you people just took pity on me. So anyway, I appreciate that. But I think that'll do it for this video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. Not deja vu or Groundhog Day, nothing like that. But let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.